from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Cube Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, well, first I'm coming to you from the floor of Cisco Live Barcelona, and I want to talk about storage. Storage continues to be soft, but there are some bright spots. I've been reporting on this for a while now, and I want to dig in and share with you some of the reasons why, maybe give you some forecasts as to what I think is going to happen in the coming months. And of course, we want to look into some of the ETR spending data and try to parse through that and understand who's winning, who's losing, who's got the momentum, where the tailwinds and headwinds. So the first thing I want to show you is, let's get right into it. What this slide is showing here is a storage spending snapshot of net score. Now remember, net score in the ETR parlance is an indicator of momentum or spending velocity. Essentially every quarter what ETR does is they go out to, in this case, 1,100 respondents out of the 4,500 data set and they ask them, are you spending more or are you spending less? And essentially they subtract the less from the more and that constitutes net score. It's not that simple, but for, the, for this purpose, that's what we're showing. Now you can see here, on the left hand side, I'm showing all respondents out of 1161. And you see the January survey net scores. You got Rubrik, Cohesity, Nutanix, and Pure, and VMware, vSAN are the top five. So Rubrik and Cohesity, very, very strong. Interesting, Rubrik was very strong last quarter. Cohesity, not as strong, but really shooting up. It kind of surprised me last quarter, Cohesity being a little low, but they were early into the data set, and now they're starting to show uh, what I think is really happening in the marketplace. So that's, that's a good indicator, but you can see 75%, 72%. Nutanix, still very strong at 56%, driving that hyper-converged piece. Um, you see pure storage at 44%, <clears throat> down a little bit, talk a little bit more about that in a moment. VMware, vSAN, you know, Veeam, et cetera, down the list. The thing about the left-hand side and storage in general, you can see the softness. Only about one-third of the suppliers are in the green. And that's a problem, if you compare this to security, you know, probably three quarters are in the green. It's a much, much hotter segment. Now, look on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'm showing what ETR calls GPP, giant public and private. You can see there's an N of 403. These are large, the largest, the very largest public and private companies, private company being a company like Mars Candy. And they say that they're the best indicators of spending momentum in the data set. So really isolating on some of the large companies. Look what happens here. You can see Rubrik gets even stronger, as does Cohesity. They're into the 80% range. I mean, that, that's really uh, rarefied air. So very, very strong. You can see Nutanix drops down. So it does better in the smaller companies, it appears. They drop down to 41%. Pure gets stronger in the GPP at 68%. You can see vSAN, VMware's vSAN, uptick to 45%. Nimble gets better, HPE's Nimble, to 54%. Uh, Dell drops down to 4.8%. HPE goes up 30 to 33%. HPE was red in the, in the, in the left-hand side. You can see Veeam drops. Not surprising, Veeam in the, in the biggest companies is not going to be as prevalent. We talked about that in our breaking analysis segment after the acquisition of Veeam. And you can see NetApp bumps up a little bit, in, 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 but it's still kind of you know, in that red zone. I also want to call your attention to Actifio. They're way, way down the bottom on the left-hand side, which kind of surprised me, and then I started digging into it, because I know Actifio does better in the larger companies, and in the right-hand side, they bop, pop up to 33%. It's only an end of three, but it's, it's, what I'm seeing in the marketplace is Actifio solving some really hard problems in database and copy data management, so you know, you're starting to see uh, those results as well. But generally speaking, this picture is not great for storage, with the exception of a few players like Ro uh, Rubrik, Cohesity, Pure, nu Nutanix, and I'm going to get into that a little bit and try to explain what's going on here. The market's bifurcated. Primary storage has been in the back burner uh, for a while now, and I've been talking about that. You know, the one exception to that has really been Pure. A little bit for Dell EMC coming back, uh, but, but really, uh, we'll dig into that a little bit more, but Pure has been the standout. Um, and they're even moderating lately, I'll talk about that some more. 
Secondary storage is where the market momentum is, and you can see that with ru rubric and cohesity. Um, and, and again, we'll talk about that some more. Let me dig into the primary side. Cloud, as I've talked about in many breaking analysis segments, is siphoning off demand from on-prem spend. The second big factor in, in storage has been there was such an injection of flash into the marketplace, it added headroom. Customers used to buy spindles to get performance, and they don't need to do that so much anymore because they, so much flash was pushed into the system. The third thing is you're still seeing in, in primary the consolidation dynamics play out with hyperconverged. So hyperconverged is the software-defined bringing together of storage, compute, and networking into you know, a single logical managed unit. And that is taking share away from traditional primary storage. You're also seeing tactical NAND pricing be problematic for storage suppliers. You saw that with Pure again this past quarter. NAND pricing comes down, which you think would be a good thing uh, for component standpoint, which it is, but it also lowers prices of the, of the systems. So that hurt Pure's revenue. Their unit volume was pretty good, but you're seeing that sort of put pressure on prices, so ASPs are down, average system prices. Let's turn our attention to the secondary market for a moment. Huge injection of venture capital, like a billion dollars, you know, for half a billion dollars over the, over the last year, and then another five billion just spent on the acquisition of Veeam. So, so a lot of action going on there. Uh, you're seeing big TAM expansions where companies like Rubrik and Cohesity who have garnered much of uh, that VC spending are really expanding the notion of, of, of data protection from backup into data management, uh, into analytics, uh, into uh, uh, security, and things of that nature. So a much, much bigger emphasis on, on TAM and expansion, of course, as I talked about the M&A. All right, so now let's dig into each of these segments. The chart that I'm showing now really digs into to primary storage. And you can see here, you know, the big players, Pure, Dell EMC, HPE, NetApp, and IBM. And look at there's only one company in the green, Pure. And you can see they're trending down just a little bit from previous quarters, but you know, still far and away the company with most spending momentum. Again, here I'm showing net score, a uh, measure of spending velocity, back to the January 18 survey. You can, sell, you can see Dell EMC sort of f fell and then is slowly coming back up. Um, NetApp, you know, hanging in there. Kind of Dell EMC, HPE, and NetApp kind of converging. And you can see IBM. IBM announced uh, last quarter about 3% growth. Um, I talked about that actually in September. I predicted that IBM storage would have growth because they synchronized their DS8000 high-end mainframe announcement to the Z15. So you saw a little bit of uptick in IBM. Pure, as I said, 15% growth. I mean, if you're flat in this market or growing at 3%, you're doing pretty well. You're probably a share gainer. And we'll see what happens in February when Dell EMC, HPE, and NetApp announce earnings. You know, we'll update uh, you at, at that time. But so that's what you're seeing now. It's kind of the same story. Pure outpacing the others, everybody else fighting for share. Let's turn our attention now to secondary storage. What I'm showing here is net score for the secondary storage players. I, I, I can't isolate you know, on a drill down for secondary storage, I could, last slide I could do on, on storage overall. But what I can show is pure plays. So we're showing here is Rubrik, Cohesity, Veeam, Commvault, and Veritas. You know, five pure play, you can argue Veritas isn't a pure play, but I consider them a pure play data protection vendor. Look at Rubrik and Cohesity. Really, you know, shooting up to the right. 75% and 72% net scores respectively. You see Veeam hanging in there. Um, and this is, again, all respondents, the full 1100 data set. Commvault announced last quarter it beat earnings, you know, but it's not growing, okay? So you can see some pressure there, and you can see Veritas you know, under some pressure as well. And you can see a net score really deep in the red. So that's cause for some concern. We'll keep watching that, maybe dig into some of the larger accounts to see how they're doing there. Um, but you can see clear standouts with Rubrik and Cohesity. I want to look at hyperconverge now. Again, I can't drill into hyperconverge, but what I can do is show some of the pure plays. So what this slide shows is the net score for some of the pure play hyperconverge vendors led by Nutanix. The relative newcomer here is vSAN with VMware. 
and you can see Dell, uh, EMC, VX Rail, and SimpliVity. I would say this, a lot of the marketing push uh, that you hear from out of Dell and out of VMware says, you know, Nutanix is in big trouble, they're, they're dying, and so forth. Our data definitely shows something different. The one caution is you can see Nutanix in larger accounts not as strong. So, and you can see both vSAN and Dell EMC stronger in those larger accounts. So maybe that's kind of their bias and their observation space, but it's something that we've got to watch. Um, but you can see the net scores here, everybody's in the green because overall, this is a strong market. Everybody is winning. It's taking share, as I said, from primary. So we're watching that very closely. Nutanix you know, continues to be strong watching very carefully that competitive dynamic and the dynamics within those larger companies which are a bellwether. Now the big question that I want to ask here is, can storage reverse the 10 year trend of the big cloud sucking sound that we have heard for the past decade? I've been reporting uh, with data on how cloud generally has hurt that storage spend on prem. So what I'm showing here in this slide is, in this slide is the, the net score uh, for the cloud spenders, many hundreds of cloud spenders in the data set. Um, and what we're showing here is the net score, the spending velocity over the last 10 years for the leaders. And you can see Dell EMC, you know, the number one, NetApp you know, right there uh, in terms of market share, IBM as well. I didn't show HPE because the slide got you know, too busy, but they'd be up there as well. So these are the big spenders, big on-prem players, and you can see, well, it's, um, it's up and down, the highs are lower and the lows tend to be lower. You, you can see up you know, in the latest surveys, maybe there's some upticks here in, in some of the companies, um, but generally speaking, the trend has been down, that, that, that siphoning away of demand from the cloud guys. So can that be reversed? And that's something that, that we're going to watch. So, Keeping an eye on that, let me, let me kind of summarize and I'll, I'll make some other comments here. One of the things we're going to watch here is Dell, EMC, NetApp, and HPE earnings announcements in, in February. That's going to be a clear indicator. We'll look for um, what's happening with overall demand, what the growth trajectory looks like, and very importantly, what NAND pricing looks like. As a corollary to that, we're going to be watching elasticity. I firmly believe as prices go down that more storage is going to be bought. That's always been the case. Flash is still only about 20, 25, 30% of the market, about 30% of the spending, about 20% uh, of, the, of the terabytes. But as prices come down, expect people to buy more. That's always been the case, so there's an elasticity to demand. It hasn't shown up in the earnings statements, and that's a bit of a concern, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. We're also going to watch the cloud siphoning demand from on-prem spend. Can the big players and guys like Pure and others, new startups maybe, reverse that trend? Multi-cloud is an opportunity for these guys. Multi-cloud management, TAM expansion into new areas, actually delivering uh, services in the cloud. You saw Pure announce a block storage in the cloud, so that's, you know, kind of interesting that we'll watch. Other players may be getting into the data protection space, but as it relates to cloud, one of the things I'm watching very closely is the TAM expansion of the cloud players. What do I mean by that? Late last year, Amazon announced a, a broader set of products or services, really, in its portfolio. So let's watch for, for Amazon's moves and other big cloud players into the storage space. I fully expect they're going to want to get a bigger piece of that pie. Remember, most, much, of, much if not most of Amazon's AWS's revenue comes from compute. They really haven't awakened to the great storage opportunity that's out there. Why is that important? Look, you saw this play out on-prem. Servers became a really tough market. Intel made all the money. Amazon is a huge customer of Intel, and Intel's getting a big piece of Amazon's EC2 business. That's why you see, in part, Amazon getting into its own chip design. I mean, in the server business, you're talking about you know, a low gross margin business. You know, and if, you're in the, if you're in the 20s or low 30s, you're thrilled. Storage, pure last quarter, had 70 plus percent gross margins. It's been a 60 plus percent gross margin business consistently. So, 
you're going to see the cloud guys wake up to that and, and try to grab even more share. It's going to be interesting to see how the traditional on-prem vendors uh, respond to that. Coming into last decade, um, you saw tons of startups, but only two companies really reached escape velocity, uh, Nutanix and Pure. Um, at the beginning of the century, you saw Data Domain, Isilon, Compellent, 3PAR all went public, Equalogic and Left Hand got taken out. There are a bunch of other uh, 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 companies that got acquired. Storage was really a great market. Coming into this decade, mid part of the decade, you had lots of VC opportunity uh, here. You had uh, 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 Fusion and Violin and Tintry went public. They all flamed out. Um, you had a big acquisition with, with SolidFire, almost a billion dollars, but really Pure and Nutanix were the only ones to make it. So the, the question is, um, are you going to see anyone reach escape velocity in the next decade, and where's that going to come from? You know, the, the likely players today would be Cohesity and Rubrik. Those would be, those unicorns would be the opportunity. You could argue Veeam, I guess, reached it, but mm, hard to tell, you know, because Veeam is a you know, private company. So by escape velocity, we're talking large companies who go public, have a big exit in the public market and become transparent so we really know what's going on there. Will they come from a cloud or a cloud native play? Mm, we'll see. Are there others that might emerge? Like a Nebulon or a, or a Clumio? Um, you know, a company like Infinidat's doing well, will they hit escape velocity and, and do an IPO and again, become more transparent? That's again something that we're watching but you're clearly seeing moves up the stack where uh, there's a lot more emphasis and spending on cloud, cloud native. Uh, we clearly saw it with hyperconverged and consolidation, but up the stack toward the apps, really driving digital transformations. People want to spend less on heavy lifting, like storage. They're always going to need storage, but is it going to be the same type of market it has been for the last you know, 30 or 40 years, a great investment opportunities? We're starting to see that wane, but we'll keep track of it. So thank you for watching this breaking analysis, this Cube Insights, powered by ETR. This is Dave Vellante, we'll see you next time.